With over 500,000 trees and shrubs already planted and growing, it's easy to forget you are in the city. We don't just say, we do. It's the Stain City Way. You are watching Real Talk with me, Anele, on SABC3, where the stage is yours. So my guest today is a firm favorite of your Sunday evening viewing pleasure. Just by me saying, Wafika, Wabona, Wachatisa, surely you can guess who she is. She recently bagged the best presenter, Golden Horn, at the Saftas. You may have heard her voice on Touch HD during her thing, during the lunch lot, and she has appeared on theatre stage, TV adverts, TV shows, and some international films. She has been through it all, seen it all, but her charm and bubbly personality has won over many hearts. This is a treat for me, without a doubt. Today, I'm handing over the stage to my big sister, my best friend, my confidant, the alter ego to my fiance. Today, you're watching Real Talk with us, them daughter sisters, Anele and Tabitha. Yeah. Sure. You've never seen that, hey? No. Why were you avoiding watching it? I don't know. First of all, because I don't even know what I said. Yeah. It, I just went up there because I was, I was literally, I was very shocked. I know, that's what I was saying to you. Keep it together. <laughs> and that's all I could hear walking there. I'm like, oh my God. And I was like, oh, I'm about to fall down. Uh, and I see you, you're like, keep it together. Because I'm it like, together. if you cry, we're not going to hear what you want to yes. say. Because I know you, okay? <laughs> you're a ball of emotions. I'm like, sure. For the family, keep it together. I'm even getting emotional watching that. Just now. watching it. Yes. I, but I understand when you say you haven't watched it because you're just like, did I thank the right people? Yeah. Do you know, but you felt like you, th you thanked the right people. Yeah, I felt okay. like at that moment I said what really needed to come out of my heart at that point. Ah. And I just said it. I, I, I didn't even realize, am I over the 30 seconds? Am I not? Is yeah. the music starting? I was just... <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Okay, so here's the thing. For the intro that I gave, I, yeah. we like wrote it many times because I had said, this is how I must introduce you. Yeah. She used to hide food in the drawer <gasps> <laughs> because she didn't want to eat. <laughs> I remember rice and pumpkin. She'd literally hide it in the in, in the drawer in the kitchen. And it would smell. And, and a week we'd be like, later, what are you smelling for days. Mm -hmm. yeah. She used to paint my mom's uh, ba bathroom, bathroom with nail polish. Nail polish. And then we'd all get beaten up. Yes, I used to um, take the money for the bus. Mm -hmm. and then spend it with my friends and walk home. <laughs> <laughs> I remember that. Hey, hey, I was a troublesome child, my gosh. And you used to just survive on tomato and salt? Cause yes, that's, that was my favorite thing, tomato and salt. And then Mama would find it next to the bed in the morning when she wake up. That, that bit of tomato that gets left over and the salt or the aromat. <laughs> this after you stashing your food away? Yeah, because I wasn't a fan of food. I wanted... You're still not a fan of food, though. You, Sana. Like, yeah, like you'll have ribs and wings, and, but like, I just, I don't see you as much of an eater. It's not your thing. No, actually, nah. Yeah. I'm not going to lie. It's, yeah. It's, it's not. It's not your thing. Yeah. What's your earliest memory of like us growing up as kids? Like, I, I want to compare now. Yeah. My earliest memory, I think it, it has to be Mtata, 16 Atua Madala. And, and we used to watch The Bold and the Beautiful. Yeah. And then we'd take the wheelbarrow and we'd reenact all of the scenes. <laughs> in the garage and we've had like the the broom as the boom mm -hmm. and like a little camera there okay last camera action then we run to our places i remember that i remember um the peaches mom's peaches oh, the peach trees at the, the back. peach trees there okay. we had to clean those and then we had to watch the other boys coming in to steal the peaches and throw stuff at them and you then know. we'd attack them for trying to steal peaches, to steal peaches. True? yes yes so when it was time for us to move from umtata because i was six so obviously you were eight yeah right yeah when it was time for us to move what was your anxiety about moving did you have any because like i was yeah. excited to move to joburg like you know what's happening in joburg it's lights and everything at least you knew where we were going <laughs> i did not know where we were why going why were you not asking questions though i i did not want to ask questions because it all happened so fast okay get inside yeah no we have to leave it we have to leave late at night no the soldiers no this no that because in tata at that time was very volatile yeah so we even left at 3 a.m in the morning then get buzzed. that's actually so true yeah so and we I took a like, tv into the trance like, yes strange so thing. we had to wait and then hide and then get into the bus mm. and then all the way so I'm like, I'm not even going to ask because these two mom and dad look like they're not even trying to answer any questions. So I'm just going to get in. I asked. 
What? Where did, what, what? I was like, where are we going? You said Joburg. I said, okay. Okay. <laughs> Let's go to Joburg. Did babe. you ask why? No, I didn't ask why. I was six years old. Why are you whying anybody? <laughs> hey, I didn't know where I was going. So I was like, okay, then. But in Let's preschool, go. you were in a production. You played Turkey Lurkey. Like, yes. Would you say that's where the drama thing started? Because it was in preschool, then it didn't appear again. And then like, then it just, after, after matric, it just came out it of nowhere out of and like totally embodied itself yeah. in you. I think um, in preschool, I was, I think I was a little quiet, but I was bossy in that production. I remember very clearly. <laughs> <laughs> Even when I took my bow, it took longer than everybody else. Yeah. You know, um, I, I really, I enjoyed it because I think of the people that I worked with, I mean, it was a preschool production. Yeah. There's a lot of fun. But I still remember your guys' names signing out because you were turkey yeah, lurky. lurky. Tim Samtot. Goofy, Lucy, 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 Zondem, Lucy, 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 yes. Yes, it, and I still, I still remember it very vividly. And when I was in high school, sports took over. True. And then I became very competitive. Yeah. And I would go and, and audition for maybe a musical. I'd get in and then they say, you can't really do both. Um, if you want to do first team netball and do musical, choose one. I was like, oh. I need to beat Willow Ridge this year so you guys can sing by your damn self. Okay. Yes. Oh, I never knew you were picking between the two. Yes, because I really wanted to do it. I went to about two rehearsals and it was so much fun. I think we're doing Sound of Music yes. that year and it was really great. But then they were like, because we'd literally, first in netball, you practice every day. Yeah, and yeah. you played provincial netball. Yes. So then that would take up they further take, of your time. Yes, yeah. But now, the language thing. Yeah. It's happening. Don't please, please. Please don't be so smug, my word. Up, How is it that we moved to so many places? Like mm. we were in Petersburg, <laughs> we, were, we were everywhere and you picked up the languages and none of us did. Uh, I think that's a question you should ask yourself. But, I won't show. but the thing is, you were so good at like <laughs> Tana and Sutu and everything else. Yeah. I can try, like I can hear, but in terms of like, you, you speak it, like you embody it. Like yeah. that's unfair because we woke up in the same house yeah. and went to the same places and yet you didn't go, hey, psst, psst. Come on, <laughs> come what me. What is that? Is, did, are you just like naturally I gifted? I love languages. I think I just, I just, any way that you can express yourself and be heard by everyone, that for me is, is a great thing. And I, I, I like the way they express different things in different ways. I mean, Tosa will express it in different than Tswana. Yeah. Tswana in Pedi, you know, Venda, everything. Um, I think anything that that comes with, with a bit of effort, a bit of performance, ah. I, I tend to, to get attracted to, you know? So basically you're saying you're dramatic. Hell yeah, I'm dramatic. <laughs> 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 Moving around a lot, this is, uh, before we go to an ad break, I just want you to answer, we moved around a lot. Do you yeah. ever feel like you were bullied anyway? Yes, um, Petersburg, I, yeah. I felt bullied. Um, Cause I mean, you get in, it's standard six, grade eight, I guess, I mean, yeah, whatever, you know, and they made me carry their bags and like told their toothbrushes while they comb their hair because we were in hostel. Yeah. And I would never understand it. And um, there was a time where the standard nines and the matrix would be like, no, we pick on pretty girls. And for me, that didn't make sense at the time because I'm like, I'm pretty. Pretty, <laughs> I don't understand. Oksalai abused this uh, children, you know. Uh. Um, I did feel that I was bullied and I, I felt that. It takes a long time for me now to get to know people and, and to be comfortable in spaces because, because of, of that. that. Yeah. Interesting. Time for a quick break. When we return, we will, actually not we, because I know her already. You will get to know <laughs> Timbisa a little bit more. Don't forget that today is the last day that you can enter our weekly competition. The winner will be announced tomorrow. We'll be back. And welcome back to Real Talk in studio with me today is my personification of Blurk, Blurk, hey English left it, Black Girl Magic. She's one of my mother's children, my own sister, Tembi Samdota. Graphic design, so you matriculate yes. and quite well, you know, yeah. and then you pick graphic design. I'm not gonna lie, I saw that coming out of nowhere. <laughs> I was just like, dude. Cause mm. one minute you wanted to study radiology, Yes. Do you know what happened? My dad was, Utada, look at me saying my dad. My dad, my dad So too. your dad, my dad, yeah. um, said, no, you're very good with computers and all things technological, but you know, you're creative as well. Put it together let's do something like informatics. Then he takes me all the way to tax. So I'm walking there, I'm dragging people, are telling us all about informatics and he's like nodding. I'm like, oh my gosh. 
And then yeah. he's like, also, oh, but you like radiology because you know all of the, the bones. Yeah. And, and then I was like, and initially I wanted to study fashion design. And he's like, mm -mm, there's no money there. Don't even, don't. Dad, about the stage and drama. Mm -mm, mm -mm. Oh, so you used like, to sketch dresses all the time. When they went to functions, I would sketch their dresses and then they'd go have them made. And his shirt and mom's dress and everything. So I'm like, oh, he's going to be okay with this. Uh, so he said no. He said no. And then he said, okay, let's put together something, technology, computers, mm. with creative side, he's like graphics. I'm like, okay, fine. I went, I studied, I graduated, came back and I said, here you go. Can I go do drama now? How long did you take it to convince him, the whole drama thing? Because uh, you worked a little at a graphic design company. Yes. And, and I was just like, oh, she's making money. And then the next thing you came home, you're like, mm -mm, girl, no. I worked there for about three, four months. Yeah. And then I wanted to go to the Grahamstown Festival. And yeah. they were like, no, you've only been here three, four months. I was like, send me my check, okay? <laughs> you know when to send it. <laughs> and I walked out of there. I got on a bus to Grahamstown. And then I went to watch um, the festival. I came back a few days and I was like, set my data down and I said, I want to be on stage. Okay, I want so to did something stage. happen in Grahamstown where yes. you kind of, what happened? Um, uh, the friends that I was with were all at Pretoria Tech and we're all doing graphics at and the time. Okay. And then we went to watch Nothing But The Truth. And there's a scene where, where Dr. John Carney walks into the stage and it's just silence and he oh, sits down. Oh, is that down. the obsession with the Carney started? Ooh, <laughs> obsession you say? <laughs> Well, like a little, <laughs> like a little something. You know, we'll get to it. We'll get to it. Yeah. Yeah. Now, so it, he just walked on. He sat down, newspaper, and that's when I think Pamela Nomveta walks in. Yeah. Uh, I was was at Rosemont, I don't remember at the time. And th the the atmosphere, everybody was just silent. There was no one chirping. There was no one looking at their phones. There was nothing. Everybody was just silent and watching this moment. And and even the preset was just f falling together uh, somehow. Uh. And then I was like, this is this is what I want to do. This is it. Oh, that's magic. This is it. And then I went home and I was like, this is what I want to do. And then you enrolled into VITS? I actually uh, decided, I went to VITS and I applied mm -hmm. and uh, they called me in for an audition. I auditioned, they asked me to sing and I sang and then they said, okay, go to the main theater. Mm. And they're like, basically, you've made it. Oh, wow. They told me that day. Everybody else, I think a lot of other people had to wait. They told me that day that I made it. So mm. I was like, and I went on my birthday as well. It was the 16th of November, I remember uh. quite well, 2003. That's when I went. And so I went home and I said to my dad, listen, listen, you say my dad again. Okay. Listen, <laughs> I want to do this, you know, just allow me to. Would you say then that the scene that you did in the road where you were kneeling on the, on the ground mm. and Ubutwasa and you were channeling the spirits, I have to say it so everyone can understand it. Yeah. Um, that was like the culmination of years and years of everything you'd learned, everything you were, everything you'd yeah. been through. It li literally lived through that scene because yes. I, I didn't recognize you. And that's yeah. usually I can, because you're my sister, I'm like, oh, okay, that's Tim, such as on yeah. TV. But that moment, I didn't recognize you. I didn't even recognize myself. I, I actually ran away from that scene for about three weeks. Really? Angus Gibson and, and Desiree and Gutloano would be like, when are we doing the scene? <laughs> and I'm like, no, okay, you know what, guys? Mm. Okay, then we're like, we have to bring in someone because the spirits and the ancestors are something very, very special. And very sacred yeah. to and us. If you, if we, you, we grow yeah, up around yeah, it. Yeah. If you're going to call them, there needs to be a reason. And if you're going to call any ancestors, also that's not right either for the sake of acting. So I said, if I'm going to do this, I'm going to do this right. And also my training had to go in there because I can't go too far. Uh. I, I need to be able to say my, the lines that I have been given and also draw from, from the moment that I'm given as well and also draw from, from the set around me and know which cameras are where and where the director is to point me to turn and what. So it's very technical, but I had to be in the moment in order for it to work. Wow, okay. You know, you never say these things during Sunday lunch. Nah. <laughs> I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna say, I'm gonna go out and say that. Yeah. You, you, you like to look good. You dress very well. You always have like the nicest bags and all of this stuff. But you're not driven by money. You, you no. don't strike me as somebody who like likes money. No. Do you know what I'm saying? So I, I, I can never balance the two. I'm like, but she's always wearing <laughs> all these amazing things and yet like, I mean, dad used to like leave his card with us and, and signed checks. Yeah. You just, you can, whatever you need you money, you, you go, need, go yeah. to. And it's not like, you know, there was a, did that teach you like the financial freedom yeah. and just being okay with money? Yeah. I think 
because of the way we were raised. Uh -huh. um, I mean, in terms of money, um, like material things. Yeah. I mean, alcohol. There's there's nothing that we've ever abused mm. because they they've taught us those fundamentals, and so. I, I don't think money is an important thing. Mm. I, 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 I want to make lots of it because I want my children to have the most amazing life. I want them to have all of those things. Mm. Um, but I love, I love to look good, but I don't think you need to spend a lot of money to look good. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Didn't you say that dress was 20 rand? This dress was 150 rand. <laughs> all right, 150 rand. And it looks like it was... Um, like Versace. <laughs> no, you know, you know. So then, if man is not important, looking good is, what else is important to you? Besides Lono Abo and Lono Abil, I mean, mm. the kids will get to later, and I know that they are your absolute life. Yeah. But what else is important to you? Art. Uh -huh. I think art is important. I think um, art, because it's, it's such a... It's, it's art, art is our world. Mm. Everything is inside it. It doesn't matter if you think you are not doing something that's artistic. You are. Whether you're doing accounting, there's an art to it. Oh. Do you know? So everything has an art to it. And... For me, everything I do um, is some sort of art and some sort of performance. Whether I'm on radio, I'm performing somehow, mm. stage, TV, you know, but it's, it needs to be genuine all the time. And you've basically ticked all the corners of it because you, you know, you've got the graphic side to it, thanks to your father, <laughs> <laughs> informatics. <laughs> you've got the dramatic side to it because yeah. you've done drama adverts. You've got the presenting side to it because, you know, you, we, you've done our perfect wedding. Mm. You've got, you, now you're on radio, so you're basically like doing this full circle in yeah. the circle of arts. Yeah. Mom being a continuity presenter yes. long ago, our mother was a continuity yes. presenter on what was before SABC1 with Lucas Titole, Nana Malloy, CCV, our, TV CCV, two, our yes. mother was there. When we'd sit and mom would make us tape her every night and every then she'd night. come back and crit herself, yeah. work ethic, this is where we get it from. When you see mom on TV, was there anything in you? And I think you were about 10, 11 then mm. that said, I want to be on that. This is it. This is yeah, it. Yeah, I loved it. Do you know, she did it with such ease. Yeah. And, and the rapport she had with, um, with, with her, her co-presenters co and the laughter, it, it, was so, it came so natural to her. Yeah. And I think, that's, I think that's just the woman that she was. You know, that's, that's just who she was. And I was like, you know what? That, even if it's not presenting, that... If, if people can see that on me through the TV, mm. I'm done. Listen, it said there's something about losing your mother that is so finite and inexpressible, a wound that will never heal. After the break, my sister and I, Timsa, chat about grieving the loss of our mother, uh, what that loss taught us, her journey to healing, and ultimately indirectly affecting my journey to healing mm. as well. We'll be right back. <laughs> And welcome back to Real Talk with myself, Annelim Dorda. So eight years ago, on January the 4th, our mom lost her battle to pancreatic cancer, leaving us and daughter goals to pick up the pieces with the help of our dad, who has always said that as a unit, we can survive anything. You, we were in Cape Town, yeah. and then dad called, is like, I think you guys should come home. Yeah. So I left on the 3rd, and then you couldn't get a flight, and you came back on the 4th. On the 4th, in the morning. In the morning. Mm. And, and then, you know, the day happened, but mom was in hospital. Yeah, I went to see her at 10 a.m. that morning. Yes. Yeah. And then we were all at home, and then dad left. Yeah, cause I, and I was sleeping downstairs by the couches, um, by the bar. In the bar, yeah. And then he woke me up, and he says, no, I need to go see your mom. I have a feeling. And then he left. Okay, so he told you that. Yes. No, because he just said he's going to go see her. And it was strange for me because dad would never go see mom without us. Yeah. So I kind of felt that it was strange that he'd gone to see mm. her without us. Yeah. And then, then on his way back, grandmom, mom's mom, mm -hmm. kind of rallied us into, into dad's, the room. dad's room. And there was like a meeting there. And then I thought, okay, it would, would, yeah. clearly there's some medical decisions to be made. Because I did not see that bomb coming. Oh, so you didn't see the bomb no. coming. No. So when dad walked in and we were sitting on the, on the carpet, all of us. Yeah. Did you look at his face? I think when he started speaking, I knew. He lost just, color in his face, yes. right? Because I, I, and I, I just knew, but I was waiting for him to confirm it because I was like, maybe I'm, no, no, it can't be, it can't be, you know? Uh -huh. So, and then once he said, Mama, was she? Amy, I can. Tickets. Okay. After that, like after he said, Mama has left us, could you hear anything after that? Because it was ringing. Okay, it was like silent, right? I just remember Unati just falling to the floor. 
<laughs> Sorry, Unati. <laughs> Sorry, Unati. We're not being insensitive. <laughs> You're an idiot. <laughs> no, but I'm, I'm painting the picture here. <laughs> okay. Falling to the floor. And also, I was on my knees and then I just sat down. I, there was just a lot happening at that time. And I think in my mind, it was just trying to sit in. And I remember just feeling pain all over my body. Just like, okay, it, it can't be, you know? So after that, like emotion and like the, the I, I just think it was, I couldn't hear anything. I could mm. see a lot of things happening. Yeah. And I was just sitting there looking at everyone and I couldn't hear anything. My, my ears just went blocked, like we're on a plane, right? Yeah. The, what, what sentence cut through for you? Because I have, I have the first thing I heard in my head. Mm. Do you remember what the first thing you heard after that? The first thing I heard was um, grandmama saying, no, but guys, she was sick, you know, you know, it's, it was bound to happen. Then we just went off at her. Yeah, how could shut you up! do that? You shut up. Mom's gone. And you just so insensitive. How dare you? And so obviously now the hurt and the anger goes to the first person to say something kind of dumb. <laughs> I think the second person to say something kind of dumb was me. <laughs> Remember when we came back from the hospital and by then the house was full. Yeah. And we had to make tea and, and coffee for people. And then, oh. and then we were running out of cups and coffee. Yeah. But my mom had like these sacred cups and coffee that you couldn't drink from. Like she was, waiting for, she was waiting for the Queen of England to yeah. arrive before we used them. So then I said, so then somebody's like, well, we need to use them. I said, you can't use those. Mom would die if you use those. <laughs> You actually did say that. And then everyone in the kitchen just kept quiet and looked at me and I was like, oh, I'll let myself out. And also people were trying, they were like, okay, do we look at her? Do we look sad? Yeah. Do, do we, we laugh? laugh? <laughs> because, you know, are they going to throw us out? <laughs> so it was like, okay. Do you remember the ride? Because obviously after dad told us we were then in, in two cars, dad drove with grandmama because he mm. had to separate us from her. Oh, yes. And then we were in my car and I was driving and yes. then we were like... Yes, got just, the Viano as well. Yes, yeah. so yeah. then we we're going to the hospital. Do you remember what happened at the hospital? Um, I do, because mm. when we got there, they had covered her with a sheet mm. um, up, up until here so that we don't see the, the blood and, and all the And stuff. the way they'd been working yes, on her. Yes, because they were trying to save her life. Yeah. And uh, I couldn't stay in the mm. room. I couldn't stay. I couldn't breathe and I just, I just, it, there was something in that room that I just couldn't deal with. Mm -hmm. So I, I went to go get some air outside and then dad brought me back and he's like, no, you have to go through this. Mm -hmm. And that's when we said goodbye to her. We just, just stood there. I mm -hmm. remember we were just standing there and, and you, you can't really say goodbye in that moment. I mean, mm -hmm. you have to say everything you ever wanted to say, mm -hmm. you know? What, what do you feel like you, had not said to mom that you still wanted to say to her? I hate you. I love you. <laughs> There's a lot. There's a lot. There's a lot. Because I think for the longest time, um, I would speak to dad about a lot of things. Mm. Because I, I think, I would, I would think that me and mom, our personalities clash. Yeah. But it was just because I, I wouldn't allow her in, mm. you know? And when she wanted to speak, um, I, wouldn't, I wouldn't be open, you know? And, and that for me, I, I wish I spoke to her more. Yeah. I, wish, I wish I let her in more. I wish I laughed with her more. I, I wish I wasn't in my mind so much that, uh, that I didn't get to know her. I got to know a lot about her and a lot more of her after she after, passed away, after she yeah, passed away you know? And because I speak to her every day, without fail, I say my prayers, I speak to her, speak to the ancestors, and I get to know so much more about her. I don't know how, and I'm open now as a person, you know? So I hope she's part of me. That's but do you way. not think that because mom was such a strong woman, like she was just always so strong, like, all the time. She never showed weakness that yeah. we were trying to emulate that, that then we, we always had to be strong. And, yeah. and the one person we were supposed to be weak with was her. Yeah. And do you feel like, did you feel like we missed out on being weak with her? Yeah, I think we did. And, 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 and getting to know her. Mm. And um, I just, you know, sometimes when, when I'm telling the boys, Aye, don't do that. <laughs> Yo, I'm a man, you know, you, you, and then mom comes out. <laughs> Yo, mom comes out so quickly, and I just smile, and I'm, and I'm like, "What are you smiling at? Mm. If you're gonna smile, you're shouting. We won't believe you." <laughs> okay. And so, 
what, what one lesson did mom teach you that you definitely want uh, Lonaba and Lonabile to know? Value yourself. Uh. You, you are a commodity. You are expensive. Each and every smile should that person you smile to is worthy, mm. you know. Um, and, and this is why for me, I, right now as a person, I think I've learned that lesson, especially after my divorce, because mm. valuing yourself and see yourself as someone who is worthy, see yourself who's someone you can stand amongst the biggest giants in the world mm. and still be great. It doesn't matter whether you sweep the streets mm. or you're making tea. Sissy, you are the one that's making the tea. You are great. Nobody's going to drink tea unless you make it. Unless you make it, girl. <laughs> she you know used to say I mean? that. And she used to treat everyone the same. Yeah. The, the laughter would be the same with the guy parking a car as, as, as when uh, uh, maybe the president would, would, would come, come over. Would come to the house. Would come to the house. Would yeah. that. And it would be the same, man. Yeah. And you know what? I think I, I channel a lot of her when I'm, when I'm on our perfect wedding because people are so giving when you open yourself up to them. Oh. And that's what I learned from mom. And her style. Oh, well. Let's see. Well, well, Let's well see. now. Well. Hey, she used to put together the threads. <laughs> Mama, hey. Oh, after the break, I chat to my sister Tembisa about the growing pains of adulting, motherhood, the choices she has made, and how these have molded her into the woman she has become. I'm going to get more real with my sister on Real Talk. <laughs> And welcome back to Real Talk on SBC3, where the stage today belongs to Tembi Sam Dorda. My sister is courageous, she's driven, incredibly talented, and she's a fierce lioness of a mother. I learned how to be a mother from her, so, I mean, you know. Listen, mm. when did you know that it was love between you and Atanba? Um, varsity. Yes. Yeah, I think it was in varsity. Because you guys were in first year together. We were in first year together, drama. yeah. Yes. From, from the beginning, I think, because we were such close friends. Yes. And, and, um, and from the beginning, when he'd come over to the house, mom would be like, that's the one. <laughs> yeah, I know his father. <laughs> that's the one, you know? And also he and I, were, would, we went through all of those teething things in, in, in trying to make this career and trying to mm. decide where we belong in this dramatic thing, you know? And the beauty is... He had never, you know, it, it was never I am John Gunny's son, you know, no. like the, the dedication I used to see in you guys, like you guys were always late on campus, rehearsing at, at that mm. little place that, at the at, bottom at of Wuzo, Wuzo School of Arts. Oh, yeah. sorry, yeah. whatever that was. It was called Wuzoa. Well, Muzoa. Wuzoa, yeah. Yeah, uh, yeah. Right. yeah. okay. Uh, so, and then when did you know that it just wasn't love anymore? Um, I, th I think it, it was probably the, the, the final years uh, of... Years? The, no, the, I think, yeah, because uh. we were there for about four or five years and we, we were changing so much and neither of us were, were maybe keeping up with the, with the change. Yeah, you, you guys were growing, yeah. but separately. Separately. Okay. Yeah. I, I don't know... I picked that up. Yeah, I don't know whether it was... Because, um, yes, yes, we love each other, but okay, so who's who's going to compromise? Who's mm. going to follow? You know, um, I remember a lot. Um, it, the first two years of varsity, I was Atanda's girlfriend, mm. and then I grew into an actress, and I even won uh, best best actress. Um, I think it was my third year, mm. and and I stopped being that person. And I, yeah, so, so now in my mind there was a change, there was there was a mm. shift, and I think in all my life that I've known Atanda. Um, we've, there's always a shift and a change and a gear, but someone is always one step behind or one step in front. Ah. You know, you know what I mean. That's very true. Yeah, yeah, that's very true. I think there was never a time when you guys were like, like literally, you know, like when the cogs just went, yes. and then it was fine. Yeah. Maybe in the early, earlier years. But, but is, do we not make the mistake of mistaking that and thinking it's passion when we're constantly rubbing up against each other? Yes. Then it's like we're passionate about yes. each other. Yes, we yeah. do. And also, we 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 are artists, and so we always. Um, trying to go for the, the passionate, emotional side of things instead of logically thinking, maybe you guys need to sit down and talk. Uh -huh. Because communication also was, was never a strong point for us, uh -huh. you know? Um, maybe just sit down and talk. It, maybe that could help, you know? Uh -huh. uh, but it, it would be always that, 
emotion and drama, <sighs> you know, and then photos, <laughs> and then <laughs> yes, and then love of my life. Yeah, happened, you know? yeah, yeah. But um, I've, I've, there's there's never a time where. I'd say that I didn't respect Adam as mm. an artist because that's something that drives him. Mm. Yeah, family art drives him. So, do you guys think you owe each other an apology? We have actually oh. done it. We've oh, given good. each other an apology. Sorry, We've I'm still in fight mode. You don't tell me these things. I'm still like in. Everybody's still in fight mode. That's the thing. No one really asks. But my whole thing is, my life is is not for people out there to now know, okay guys, hello, hello, ni ready, see right. Hello guys, hello, hello, see uh, You oh, know I'm not that kind of person. Okay. I, don't, I don't do that. Okay. I mean, and I don't, I don't think we've stopped really apologizing to each other, okay. you know? And um, uh, I think the, the good thing is growing out of something um, that, is, that has happened between two people, for the two people to grow, for the two people to realize it. Mm. It doesn't matter if the rest of the world knows, if the rest of the world is staying and saying, oh, hey, mm. okay, they're good now, okay, they're not okay now. I actually don't care okay. what the rest good. of the world would think, yeah. you know? And um, I, I would hope that he doesn't either now. Okay. And as, as your sister, I, I know, but I mean, all families do this. <laughs> <laughs> I know. I don't, <laughs> shut up, okay. I don't really care like what happens. All I care is that I'm there to take your side, right? Yeah. So I never got to care like what happened, why it happened, no, no, yeah. no. I was just like, don't disrespect my sister in public. Yeah. If you want to say something to her, say to her face or yeah. through the families. Yeah. So, you know, watch yourself. And this is what I'm here for, to like Which protect you. Mid but now, what, what, what do you know that like, okay, can, can you like take any ownership of the, the wrongness that happened between the two of you? A lot. A okay. lot, a lot of, of wrongness. Um, he knows it, I know it. We've sat down, we've spoken about it. There, there is a lot. And, and, and I think he needed to hear it from me. You know, okay. he needed to hear it from me for all those years, or why I was closed up or why I was blocked and why this, when this and this happened one day when I came home, it actually really hurt me. So we've had to go back and do it step by step. Okay. Yeah, and I, I've had to take a lot of responsibility because I think a lot of what happened is me just not giving him the chance to be the husband, you know? The, and I, I, was, I was always just like, um, especially after mom died, look, something's about to happen. Look, something bad's going to happen here, you know? And I never fully trusted in the moments that I had so until then after would, all it happened. So then you would always, something's about to happen, so then what, what you'd always have like, a, a safety place that you go to or like yes. a safety net or something else that's yes. going to make you feel like yeah. you know yeah. nothing is going to yeah. happen even when i wasn't um getting booked for jobs you know and and he was and he was going to work i would be like i feel so useless because we've gone through this journey together and now we're here and mm. we have these beautiful kids and and and, and he'd go to work i'm sure he'd come back and i'm still wearing the same gun i was wearing in the morning because i'm like oh guys hire me what's going on with me mm. but and once I started um, the road, I learned so much about what the person I did not want to be. And I really was that person. Mm. I was that person that didn't want to be. And when I was on the road, I, I opened up completely. And then going on to our perfect wedding, I just opened up completely. And now I'm, I'm, I'm more of a, a giving person. I can attest to that. You know, and the more I give, the more I do get. not the more I get right, mm. and the more I just do not care about what people say or what people do or what happens outside. That used to be a thing for me, mm. you know. Oh, oh, Buzzo, China, about the Y Limited, <laughs> you know, <laughs> that company. Mm. But no, 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 no. Now, um, I think I, 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 I can truly say that I am free. And also with Nina as a family, I was always like. To the point where, why is him so mean? Like, I thought he was such a mean person. I'm like, yeah, what, what, what why does she walk in and not greet? What, what, what part of the game is that? You, you know? know what I mean? Yeah. And, and um, for me, I, I would be like, but it's my personality. Why don't they get me? Nobody gets me. Can't you? I had to go in deep, deep introspection. And I think everything that happened allowed me to do that. Okay. Mm. Her life mantra is walk to the soundtrack of your own tune. After the break, we find out if she's now dancing to her own soundtrack. And of course, I want to know what those songs are. We'll be back after this.
and we're back for the last time today. My guest is not just an actress, a radio presenter, a TV presenter. I mean, TV presenter. Well, TV. <laughs> You're an idiot. I mean, <laughs> all right. So th th this is happening, right? This is happening. Yeah. You, you know, I want for best. You know talk show that's this is all of us this is cheeky media yeah. this is like the production team the camera guys me it's collective <coughs> yours is a presenter it's basically saying yeah you we see you we see you we see you you're the boss yeah the day you started our perfect wedding the first episode that flighted we were flying from east london yes and uh in the newspapers early that morning the whole paternity <laughs> scandal debacle had gone out yes and of obviously atando's family had released that do you think that was strategy from their side to release it on the day you are... Yes, of course. Okay. Of course, I think so. Would I you agree with me if I say that it helped you? Um, Immediately, no. But, like, no. everybody went to go watch you. I, I think... Well, no. I, uh -huh. Well, let me, let me say this. Because um, I don't think it helped me as such. I think it just proved that whatever it is that they were planning really didn't work. Okay. It just proved that... The whole thing that they'd been planning, because they had been planning it for a while, yeah. um, that it, it didn't work. Okay. I think that's what it proved to me. Not necessarily that it, it helped. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, I, I, I see what you're yeah. saying. But also, it just proved, because I remember saying to you, look, in three weeks' time, yeah, no one's going to be talking about this. People are going to be talking about the next thing. So what work are you doing with Rosie Mudene? Um, she's actually not even living in the country at the moment. I think she, she's in Uganda uh -huh. working on, on television. Um, look, Rosie is, I worked with her, she brought me in to do Vagina Monologues, mm. stage production with the most amazing people, Vanessa Cook was on there, mm. um, Libo Mashile was on there with, on stage, and uh, uh, Kucho, Kucho Green, amazing actress, she was there. Um, we did it, it was a woman on stage and we just did Vagina Monologues and it was amazing. And from there, we, we, her and I had so, a sort of relationship. Mm. We started speaking a lot and, and I, I admire her on mm. so many levels. levels. Mm. And she was there for me the most when I went through everything, actually. But Even if I didn't have to call her, she'd call me and be like, let us talk. Just sit on the ground, let us talk. I'll talk you through it. And she was amazing. And um, so she introduced me to the woman at Power. And, and Power uh, is, something that is very important in this country. Mm. I, th I don't think many women use it enough because when you are down and you don't know what to do and, and you, 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 you've literally just feel like you've just been used as a scrub lap, mm. you know? And what, where do you go? You, you go to people opposing women abuse. Mm. They will listen to you. They will take you in and do whatever it is that you need to do. And she did that for me. As so you found a lot of your power in that. Yes, I found a lot of my power in that. And, and I think also when they sit you down and they say to you, this is, you are going to think that all of this is your fault. You are going to think that all of this that is happening. And of course, they're going to make you feel that way because that's still abuse talking. Yeah. But it's not. And you will stand and you'll remember this day when you're standing that you are standing now and you, are, you will not fall. You'll continue to stand. And then when you're ready, you're going to take your step in the next step in the next step. So I think it's very important to use those things that are available for women in this country. And in, in, in the darkness and everything that you went through, do you, when you are now standing, because mm. girl, you're standing. I'm standing in my six inch heels, girl. <laughs> do you not like regret not speaking to dad earlier? Um, I do. Oh. I, I really, really do. And because the, the first thing he said to me was, no, but I lost a sister to this. How do you not come to me and tell me? Yeah. You know, and I really felt it. But I thought, you know, the thing you have to, be strong mm, within your marriage, mm. you know? I, I actually really thought that I could fix it. And that was also one of my biggest issues, that just you can, be, but oh, you know, when, turn to your when family. dad's sister, my, our, our aunt was murdered by her husband. Mm. Um, when that happened, I don't think mom and dad spoke to us enough about it. They didn't. They didn't, it was yeah. just a, oh, you know, this she's, is what she's passed away, we're going yeah. to the funeral. But dad was very emotional. I don't he think was he emotional. was able to. Remember when he was crying at the funeral? Yeah. That's the first time I saw dad cry. Yeah, ever. And when the priest was talking about how she had passed away, that's the first time I knew what had happened. Yes. 
So yeah. then I was like, oh, guys. And then well, after that, no one spoke to us yeah, about it again. No so, it. you know, I think it's very important if you're going to be raising girl children. You know, I mean, dad's an amazing father. But yeah. also at the end of the day, parents do have that thing where yeah. they don't want, they think they're not hurting you. So they don't want to hurt you. So they don't talk mm. to you about things. Or they don't want you to fear whatever it is that you're venturing into. Uh. Uh, but you, you need to be able to know so that you can know the signs. Uh. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Because it could be a verbal thing. But it's the same form of abuse, do you understand? Yeah. Yeah. So you need to be able to pick up when, yeah. when, when someone is coming at you sideways. Yes. You know, so that you like, hey man, my ex kicked the bag at me. I was like, I'm out of here. <laughs> I was like, hey. you I know? called them like, oh, oh, oh. Yeah. you know? Yeah, so I you have to be, able to, 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 to be able to see the signs and to know what it is for what it is. And not be like, no, I need to, you know? So that is obviously very proud of you captain awesome captain awesome is very proud of you what else can we look forward to that he's going to be proud of in the near future oh my goodness i am you've got two minutes so you better start talking like i said when i said the speech i'm a phoenix i'm rising from the ashes uh -huh. because they tried it um i'm doing two films this year alone one international one uh, both oh leads girl we're going to america listen we're going everywhere <laughs> and and it's weird and it's lovely because for this one they want me to to close my gap just just for the film so they're going to put veneers so it's going to be completely different person completely different character and i'm looking forward to it and then the second one mm. um i don't know if i can talk about it but there's two very brilliant female filmmakers salamina musese and oh, stefina, yes. stefina zwane oh. yes they are putting together the most amazing film um female leads. did you just call my show three talk i called it real talk I'm gonna call Auntie Nolene. You're gonna have problems. Yeah. Yes, what else are you doing? Yes, I'm doing that and I'm working on um, that producer thing side oh. of things now. I think we need to, and we say this all the time that we need to tell our own stories and tell our own stories. Mm. So I'm working with a friend of mine and um, my, I've got my production company up and running, uh -huh. um, Osaka Productions, and we are working on a series, mm. a law series. Oh, wow. Yeah. Like the practice? It's going Only to be darker. Africa but South African actors. Okay. So we're working on something like that. And uh, I'm, I'm looking to go back to the stage as well when I get the time. That's what you like, that's so your that's passion? That's what I love, it's my passion. Um, I'm having the best time of my life at Touch HD. Mm. The, the environment, the, the music, the people that I work with, Touch is an incredible leader. Amen. So I'm enjoying myself <laughs> immensely, you know, in the radio side. Okay, we're gonna go now. Why are you wearing a ring? Where? On the, on the, yeah. You, Sana, these rings are so beautiful. Why is there a ring on I the I loved finger? them so much that I thought, let me wear these rings to Real Talk with Anele. Okay. <laughs> and that's it from us. That's it from the SAFTA winning daughter sisters. You know, Beyonce put it perfectly when she said, because we're A-listers. Yeah. We paid sisters. Thank you to Tembi Sam Dota for keeping it real with me on Real Talk. She is my constant inspiration and support. And she has continuously demonstrated that when life deals you a bad hand, what matters is the way you keep moving and playing. Tomorrow, we're back at 5 p.m. It's a date, right? Good night, folks.